Because so like I said, these aren't great. They're, they're just to judge whether or not I did a good job. So, um, as Dr. Wood said, my name is Rachel Kraft. Um, I'm in the postmaster's nursing education program. Um, trying to get a postmaster's certificate, and I'm a master's prepared nurse practitioner. Um, the WHNP um, stands for Women's Health Nurse Practitioner, so my master's was in women's health, and where I currently work is in a practice in New Hampshire doing primary care for women. So I see them for anything from their GYN issues to their sinus infections, cold, well women checks, that sort of thing. I also work in a pediatric practice on Sundays, um, just as an RN, not just as an RN. As an RN, I check people in. Um, I do an initial assessment before the doctor comes in, take their chief complaint. And so um, in both of these settings, one of the major issues that we see is pain. And by the way, if I speak too quickly, because I have a tendency to do so, and I've had a lot of coffee this morning, or if I'm not loud enough, please raise your hand and let me know beforehand. Um, so pain is something that as a nurse you'll probably see in every single setting. I can't think of one where I wouldn't see pain. I've worked as a flu clinic nurse giving, giving shots. I've worked as a wellness nurse taking blood. You're going to see pain um, on any scale in the hospital. Lots and lots of painful surgical pain. Um, I have you know, tons of clients that come in and I hurt my ankle, my knees hurt when I exercise. And so it's really important for us to get a good pain assessment. And part of the problem with pain assessment is that it's subjective. So pain is what the patient feels it is and it's what they tell you it is. And you're supposed to listen to the patient um, and use their interpretation. But you also have to document it and you also have to think about it um, in a larger context. So um, hopefully this lecture will help you do that somewhat. Um, so the things that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the interview a, lot, a little bit. Uh, this is something that's going to be part of the next lecture, but you're all going to be talking to patients. And one of the comments, one of the girls in my class is actually teaching a maternity rotation in clinical, and she said that one of the problems that her students have are just talking to patients. Going in and feeling like you're not invasive, feeling you're, like you're not bothering them. All of these, these are women on postpartum floor and women on labor and delivery, and so they've just had their babies and they're with their families, and a lot of times the students are very uncomfortable going in and being like, hi, how you doing? I need to do my assessment here. So the interview and thinking about some of these skills will hopefully help you feel more comfortable talking to your patients. Um, I already talked a little bit about pain assessments, but I'm gonna talk about PQRST, which is um, very helpful when you're assessing pain. It kind of helps you remember some of the factors and the questions that you should ask. And then I'm gonna talk about a few pain rating scales um, these are ways to kind of put a number on people's pain because everybody comes and says that this hurts or this hurts a lot and it's hard to make that subjective feeling into an objective number that you can document. So, the interview. You're going to be talking to patients a lot. You're going to be talking to them all the time and sometimes you're going to need to get long responses, sometimes you're going to need to get quick responses and there are different types of questions and uh, communication techniques that are helpful. What can you guys tell me about open questions? You know anything? So an open question is designed to let somebody um, kind of go with the flow. It lets them decide what's important, what's not. It's not a question that has a yes or no answer. So when I asked you, what can you tell me about open questions, not a yes or no answer. You could have given me a long answer, you could have given me a short answer. Um, these are things like, what brings you to the hospital? What brings you here today? It gives the patient a chance to talk and tell you what they think is important. Closed questions are questions that require a yes or no answer, and they're kind of guiding questions. Well, you want to base a lot of your interview on open questions because it really brings it back to the patient. Sometimes patients really follow a pathway that gets off track from their main issue. I had a woman come in the other day for a cold and she ended up telling me about her diverticulitis and how she had a surgery and about another, another nurse practitioner who was really great. And sometimes you need to use those closed questions like, well, 
did you have any swelling? Did you have any pain in your abdomen? Do you have any sinus pressure? Those are yes or no questions that will kind of bring them back around to the subject that you want to talk about. Facilitation. So sometimes somebody will be talking and maybe they'll pause and you want to help move them on. So those are things like, yes, go on. And you are saying, just kind of to let them know that you're listening and that you want to hear what they're saying and kind of help them move along. Silence is also a rarely used communication technique. I feel like I talk a lot and sometimes I talk over people. But really, you have to give people a chance to say things. And sometimes when you ask them a question and they don't answer right away, your instinct is to pop in there with more questions. Pop in to clarify. But occasionally, a few seconds of silence, even though it feels uncomfortable to you, will help your patient talk. Summary. Um, summaries often let your patients know that you've heard them. So you've taken all of their information and you give it back to them in your own words or even using their own words. So you're telling me that you've had nasal congestion for three days and that you have a lot of sinus pressure and you have headache and the thing that's bothering you most is that your ears hurt. And so, and that way they're able to clarify. It's a clarifying statement. And another thing that you want to pay attention to is nonverbal communication. And so this is especially important during pain, um, grimacing, bending over, but it's also you know, important enough in other interviews. During a physical, I often can gauge whether or not somebody's feeling comfortable with the way that they're holding their shoulders, the way that they're standing back. And the thing about nonverbal communication is that you have to make sure that you pay attention to your own nonverbal communication as well. If you're sitting there like this, you are obviously not ready to listen to the patient. Or maybe you are, but they're not going to think that. You're giving this, I'm rushed, I don't feel like listening to you sort of attitude. So you have to pay attention. And that's kind of what the cartoon is for. Um, he is obviously not paying attention to his dog's nonverbal communication. <laughs> So now that we've talked a little bit about the questions, um, a 40-year-old woman is 24 hours post-laparoscopic gallbladder surgery. When you come in for your shift, the patient tell you, tells you that there's a terrible pain in her stomach. What are some of the questions that you think that you would ask? How long has it been going? Good. Anybody else? really helpful for remembering what questions you need to ask about pain is this PQRST. Um, the P stands for the palliative or precipitating factors, so exactly what you were saying in the back. So what makes this better? Does sitting over make this better if it's stomach pain? Does standing up? Does having a bowel movement make it better? Does laying down make it better? And also what makes it worse? Is it worse when you sleep on your stomach? Is it worse when you're on your side? Is it worse when you're running, all of those sorts of things, because we can have a spectrum of how much pain someone is feeling. Um, the second thing is the quality of pain, and a lot of people mentioned this, and so it's the type of pain. Is it sharp? Is it dull? Is it burning? Is it grinding? All of those things can kind of help people factor in and zoom in on what's, what the source of the pain is. And a lot of times when you're seeing a post-surgical patient, you're the nurse. You're the person who's going to be spending the most time with that person. And you might be reporting this off to somebody who's going to make a diagnosis. And so if you give those, them those factors first, then they can go in and ask even more questions to help discover what the source of the pain is. Um, R is the region, or radiation of the pain. So exactly, where is the pain? Is it lower? Is it upper? Is it in the middle? Is it around the belly button as far as the abdomen? You know, and you can do this with any body system. Is it chest pain? Is it, does it, is it when you... Is it here? Is it substernal? Is it down here? Where is the pain? 